Hello and welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now, this is going to be a sort of quick review, um, but it's about a product that's been out for ages, to be honest. So it's not, it's, it's, this isn't a new product, but I just thought it needed a little bit more talking about, really. Um, and it's part of uh, a, one of the exposure ranges, because exposure is sort of split into three separate ranges, really. Um, the really well-known popular one is the sort of 2510, 3510 integrateds, and there's various pre-power combinations from that. And then you've got the big stuff, the 5000 series. But there's also uh, XM series, which are all half width. And what I've got, I've got a couple of bits set up down here. And now, XM CD player, I've, I've reviewed before. Um, I wouldn't consider, if you want a half box size, size player, I wouldn't even think about going to, to things like Cyrus, because this is so good. It's better than anything else I've heard, which is half box size. Uh, and matching XM5 integrated. Now that combination is brilliant. I mean, I'll be I'll be, I actually sort of play, I, I sort of go between this setup and the Atoll um, combination in the shop, just for background music and just to run stuff in. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it just feels a bit special. It's nicely made, it dries really well, and it's whatever, silver or black, that sort of thing. But this isn't what I'm talking about. There's also another model in the range um, which has other applications. So that's what I want to talk about. I've, I've got them set up upstairs, saying them, which might be a clue. Set up upstairs, um, and let's just have a walk around it. So what have we got? These are Exposure XM9s, which are half width monoblocks. So basically the, the two side by side, put, put them on the shelf, they're about the same size as a, a standard um, stereo power amp. But every, obviously everything is completely mono, got separate power supplies, even separate, separate on-off switches, separate mains leads. So channel separation is going to be as good as it's going to get. Um, they don't rate massively powerfully these, but they, they do, they're about 80 watts into 8 ohms, which some people would say isn't a lot. To be honest, in most scenarios, that's fine. And the main thing about these is they do sort of increase quite considerably as the impedance drops, which is what you want. I mean, there's lots of highly rated amplifiers out there, wattage-wise, that, that fall apart if the impedance drops and they sound thin and they need, they need driving hard to make things sound any good. These don't. They do, seem to, they do seem to drive at low volumes really, really well because of the big transformers, because there's two of them, um, and because of this ability to drive lower impedances. So if the, if the bass drops, which is, tends to be when the impedance drops as well, these will keep a grip of it and make it you know, sound full and natural and all this sort of thing. Now, the reason I'm talking about these is, I mean, it's generally, I wouldn't sort of say to people, if you're going to upgrade your system, start in the middle. But if you're in the situation where you've got a good front end, um, a reasonable amplifier, and perhaps a pair of speakers that are, you know, that are not that straightforward to drive, perhaps. I mean, you know, perhaps a pair of Pro Ax or um, what else would be like, Dyn Audios are sometimes a bit tricky, um, and that sort of thing. And you want to sort of improve things. If you're an integrated amplifier that you're using, so you've got a Riga LX or you've got, um, well, one of the, like an Exposure 2510 or something like that, they will have a preamp out. So you can, basically you're, you're abandoning the internal power amplifier and replacing with the monoblocks. So then you'll get a lot more drive. It, an amplifier generally is very dependent on its preamp, so you have to tread carefully with it. You can't just you know, perhaps you use an old, old audio lab or something like that, which was sort of good power amps, but not that great preamps, or an old Rotel, which was similar, the preamps weren't too good, but the power amps were good. You have to know what you're doing, you have to sort of choose kind of wisely with it, really. Um, but if you've got a grand plan that you're going to, you want to improve your amplifier, you want to do it in stages, you want to go to something really good, add, the, add your little exposures in, then perhaps change your, Partech your integrated and buy a, you know, perhaps the, what, there's a, a matching preamp for these, or you could go for even um, 3510 preamp from exposure. I've got people using Tom Evans preamps, this sort of three, three and a half, well, sorry, it's not three and a half, um, 5,000 pound preamp with exposure power amps, and th their stuff seems to, seems to gel well together. So there's, there's all sorts of ways you can go with it, and then you can sort of, in, it's, ju it's just a stepping stone way of improvement, which was always the point with multi-box systems, w w that you didn't do it in one hit, you would add boxes and improve things and it was, it was just a great way of doing it really. So yeah, there we go. Um, they're a bit odd, <laughs> one thing I'd say is a little bit odd about these. On the back panel, these are monoblocks and yet we have two of everything. Uh, we've got 
what appears to be left right input and left right output actually this is single output and it's, it's just to take by wire really so you can actually run with two sets of cables but they're just connected together inside it's, it's just of e ease of connection really uh, and I th these basically paired up as well but um, I think it's basically because the chassis is a standard from other products so uh, rather than have a specific chassis for this with the different cutouts on it they've just kept it with a twin socket on it's sort of a, it's a little bit sort of yeah I don't know I don't know if I, I like that really it feels like it's a little bit of sort of cost cutting really but as cost cutting goes that's not crazy also got XLR um, and the usual three pin IEC socket um, so yeah fairly straightforward on the front panel you've got is on off really so yeah couldn't be simpler so you'd plug in plug into your pre-power out your, your preamp out on your your integrated and away you go and you've got more drive you've got more everything really um, so yeah that's it I mean there's certain amplifiers that don't have preamp outs I think um, I'm trying to remember now Sugden I don't think particularly have preamp outs on there might be wrong actually yeah, I don't think I don't think Sugden do but Sugden Sugden is one of those amplifiers where the, the, the power amp is run over there. Uh, Sugden is one of those amps where the power amp is a, good, is, is, is a great part of it, really. So you probably we wouldn't do it in that scenario. But, you know, there's, there's quite a lot of stuff out there. I have had people who've bought these, um, multiples of these, to run with AV amps that have got preamp power. So you can have five, five or seven running all these independent speakers. And that's quite impressive. Um, I've also known people have, who run with four, four of these. So if you've got bi-wireable speakers, you could actually have one, one left, right for treble, left, right for bass. And that's really good. I've done that in the past with, I had Rotel, um, power amps with a name, name preamp for a bit, and a, at one point I had a valve preamp with it as well. But that was superb, actually. The, amount of, the control that that had was astonishing. And I do have a little dream. Uh, I need to sort of, sort of work, <laughs> another set of these for the shop I think to try that it's an expensive exp expensive experiment but I should imagine that would be amazing really so anyway I'll just turn the camera around um, yeah just a, just a short just a short review really um, think about the sound wise which I haven't talked about I just realised I haven't actually talked about the sound of these exposure is very very clean and clear and very musically correct it does hold your attention with the music very well um, partly because Everything's discreet, everything's um, very purist. Uh, you know, there's proper, you know, everything's protected from everything else and route paths are all clean and clear and everything, whatever else. I'm talking rubbish here, but um, as far as amplifiers go, everything is done with decent componentry and made so that nothing interferes with anything else. That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, and they're, what they're very good at this sort of, like I said, the musicality thing. Um, a bit like names used to be, and I think exposure has kind of almost taken over the crown from name in that respect. Really, they, they're really good, um, sort of with a sort of enjoyment level. It's just the, the, the part of it that keeps you listening, whereas other brands have gone more sterile now. Linden Name, I, I think both have gone very sterile sounding, uh, but exposure still has that life and that bite in the sound that just keeps you listening. Really, um, I'm trying to think. Um, the big versions of these, the big 50 tens, well, there's a, there's a few power amps that they do. They do 35 tens and they do um, the 50 tens. The 50 tens are shockingly good, actually. Um, very reminiscent of um, the original Name 135s, but better, actually, just a big scale version of an old 135. So, yeah, Exposure do some great, great stuff at the moment. And their waiting list has come right down because they, they, they had a waiting list that was increasing when everybody else was catching up. Strangely, they seem to be late to the party because early days, just after COVID, when everything slowed up and we couldn't get anything, a lot of a lot of companies were it was virtually impossible to get the products. Like Sugden was impossible, um, Audio Technica and people like that, you couldn't get the stuff. Some of the Riga products were in, in, impossible to get, and through that exposure, were available. And then it started to get to the point where people said, "Oh, we've, oh we've, we've got more stock coming now." And at that point, exposure the exposure the time started to get longer and longer and longer and it's only just now that they seem to have stock of things again it's taken pretty much four years for for that catch-up which i'm really pleased about because i love exposure and it was one of those I, I was having to sort of bypass it in conversations because i thought i was thinking i have no idea when i'm going to get one of those so anyway we're, we're back up to <laughs> we're back up to speed with with exposure um i mean similarly uh, sugden had the longest of all waiting lists and they, they've caught up now. 
I think there's a few weeks on some things, but yeah, so that's that's really good. Oh, well, incidentally, uh, not part of the review, but Sugden have just had quite a big price rise. I was going to pre-warn everybody, um, but forgot because I went on holiday and came back and thought it's April the first. Um, quite a, yeah, quite a big increase on the basic A21 is now 2,900 from 26, so it's gone up by 12 percent, something like that. But it's been a while actually, so fair enough, really. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Um, if you want to try XM9s, just give me a shot. Uh, I've got these demonst demonstrations set here if you want to try some. Um, I was going to say, I was going to do um, a Dali sort of uh, review of Oberon 5s versus 7s. I'll do, I'll do that during the week next week, actually. Um, partly because I've still not really run the 7s in properly and they're, they're just coming together now and I've started to get a proper, sort of proper impression of them, really. I've got, I've, I've got a pretty good idea how they're going to end up but uh, I'll just finish that off um, so yeah that's it I'll um, I'll leave it here uh, don't forget to give a subscribe and a like because I, I know you want to do that <laughs> that's Johnny Smith isn't it um, is it Johnny Smith who says, says that every time anyway sorry um, and I'll see you in a future video this is getting a bit bonkers now I'll see you in a future video thanks very much <laughs>